hello and welcome back to the Drag Detective. I'm Derek and today we are going to break down what All Stars 8 would have looked like if it was not rigged. The unrigging of All Stars 8, if you will. Now I have been sitting and staring at this track record for weeks now and I feel like I have done the absolute best job that I possibly could to make an unrigged version of the season. Will my bias factor in? Definitely. How could it not? But I have tried my absolute best to make this as subjective as possible, as fair as possible, and I think that I have done that. So hopefully you won't have horrible things to say about me in the comments, but let's be real, we all know that you will. I would love to announce, if you are not following me on social medias and things like that, that the Drag Duel Meet the Judges promo just dropped um, this Monday, this past Monday, and um, I turned to look. So, <laughs> what can I say? But also, my amazing co-hosts and judges, Zelda Vox and Bootsy, also turned incredible looks. And just one week, I guess less than a week now, next Monday, August 7th, our official cast will drop. You will get all the Meet the Contestants videos over on the Drag Duel YouTube channel and some other stuff throughout the week as we gear towards the premiere of Drag Duel Season 1, on August 14th. So you do not want to miss it. It is going to be so much fun. This cast is literally iconic. I'm so excited to show the world the talent that we have on this cast. I hope you all love them as much as we do. So make sure you follow us on all social medias and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you do not miss a single thing. Also, I do want to make a quick announcement. I will be discontinuing my Patreon. And this was a hard decision but I simply do not have the time, and I don't think I've had the time for a while now to really make the content that's worth the money. I love that people want to support me, and I've had people say they don't even need anything to like want to support me. Well, that is amazing, and I thank you so much. But Drag Duel is going to be having a Patreon, and we will have literally so much stuff on that. So anyone who's a little upset that my Patreon is going to be discontinued, Go subscribe to the Drag Duel Patreon instead. There will be so much stuff. There will be extra lip syncs, extra runways. We have our own podcast where we talk about some behind the scenes stuff. We have behind the scenes with the looks. We have so much stuff that's going to be up there. And it's kind of iconic how much stuff we actually have. So that is also the best way to support me and Butsy and Zelda, as that is the only revenue we're going to be getting from Drag Duel. So... If you want to support us, if you want to keep supporting me, um, that is the best way to do it. So I will put the link to the Drag Duel Patreon in the description below. And again, apologies to anybody who has been a loyal patron for, you know, years now. I've appreciated you so much. I just don't want to get money from you if I don't feel like I'm giving you enough content that warrants it. And I feel like it's kind of been like that for a while now. So that is going to be going into effect like now. <laughs> I think I, I paused the billing cycle and I'm trying to figure out a way to like keep everything up so you still have like access to everything. Um, so we'll figure that out. But but yeah, that is my official announcements. And now we can get into the unrigging of All Stars 8. Now, as I said in my riggery video, which you haven't seen, go watch that first. I'll put it up here in the top corner. I don't think this is the most rigged season of all time, but... I will say sometimes, okay, I don't know how to explain this. So sometimes a very rigged season, even when you unrig it, the elimination order might not change that much. Like it could be like completely insane, but the elimination order is still kind of intact. This season though is the opposite where I don't think it's like completely fair. Um, obviously things change. And I think the things that do change make the elimination order completely <laughs> different. So this elimination order is a lot different than what we saw on the season which is always exciting to me because you know I, I love doing these videos but sometimes when it's just like the same elimination order it's like I'm sure that's a little bit more boring to watch whereas this one is going to be a wild ride so we are going to go through it all episode by episode starting off with the very first episode which was the girl groups but it was more than just the girl groups that went into it there were three runways, a famous then, famous now, and famous forever, and those were also all factored into critiques. So the way that I personally judged this episode was by kind of giving them all scores and trying to figure out who had the highest score. 
at the end. And as you can see, I weighed the challenge the most um, with the looks kind of equaling the challenge in the end. So I felt like that was the best way for me personally to make this as unrigged as possible. And I tried to be as objective with the looks and all of that, obviously. So one thing that does not change is, is Kahana Montrese is the winner of this episode. She had the highest score, literally did not flop in any category. All of her looks were good. Even her worst look I thought was a solid look. And even though she wasn't my favorite in the challenge, she was right up there with the best. So all of that combined, I think, makes for a very easy and obvious challenge win. Now, the other two queens that were in the top for me were Jessica Wilde and Alexis Michelle. They both had amazing performances. Jessica actually was tied with Lala for the highest score for that performance. And they also had incredible runways. Now, Lala Ree, I think, was very close to being in the top for me like she was in the episode. But because she had a very much of a flop of a runway look, I just couldn't put her in the top when Alexis and Jessica across the board were consistent and consistently really good. So that is kind of what docked La La Ree for me. And obviously, if you're someone who only cares about the challenge, then you would probably put Lala in the top. But for me, there was so much more to this episode with the looks that I couldn't do it. So Alexis and Jessica were the tops for me. Now, for the bottom three, we all know James was saved from this episode from being in the bottom. <laughs> I mean, her performance in the challenge was very bad. It, it was not good. I think, yeah, her and Monica have the two lowest scores for me. She did have a good verse, and she performed her verse well. But when it came to the choreo, it was bad. I mean, it was really, really bad. And I understand that, like, she was going through it and, like, wanting to quit and all of that because she couldn't do the choreo. But it just never really came together for her. So because of that... I did put her in the bottom. And the reason that I put Darian low instead of in the bottom is because most of her issues were with her looks. Her looks were fine. Most of them just were not standouts, specifically the first two. I mean, I love the Billie Eilish. <laughs> it's it's so funny to me. But like, let's be real. It is just a shirt and pants. So it worked for me. But when I'm scoring it against all of these like, you know, intricate and like obviously very expensive looks, it just doesn't stack up. But I thought Darian did a pretty good job in the performance. Specifically, her verse was great. Did she have a little bit of trouble keeping up with the choreo? Yes, but it was not anything terrible. It was nowhere near as bad as James's was. I think that's kind of her saving grace here. I think she does deserve a low, but like bottom two, I don't see it compared to Monica and to James. Now, Monica, unfortunately, was the worst for me this week. Most of her looks were just a little bit um, lacking besides her Cleopatra look. And her performance was just very low energy. Her verse was low energy. You could tell she was very nervous and she just was not giving it her all. So I thought that her bottom placement very much made sense. Looking at the scores, the only other person that I could really see being in the bottom was Nasha Lopez, mostly because her looks were also a little bit more on the basic side. But as we know, she had like two weeks less to prepare than everybody else. So like, that's not really her fault. But obviously, that still comes into play when we're looking at critiques. The thing that makes me think she doesn't deserve to be in the bottom three, though, is that she was unoffensive in the performance. She was not a standout. I think she does fade into the background, but she didn't do anything actively wrong. So I think that definitely saves her in my eyes from like being worse than like any of those other three that I put in the bottom. So what would happen with a Kahana win and a James and Monica bottom two? I think James goes home. James very clearly goes home. I think if Kahana won the lip sync, she sends James home. And I think if the queens had to vote, if their vote comes into play, James still goes home. I think it was very clear that like saying you're going to wanting to quit episode one is just not it. And I think no matter how much she fights for herself in Untucked, Monica is someone who I think everyone really was excited to see back and see get the platform and get the exposure. And she was obviously very well liked by everyone in the room because you could tell it was really hard for these queens to send her home on that first episode. So I think James is toast. I think James is actually toast. So it does make sense that they would rig it so that she wasn't in the bottom because if she was, it's over. Like if she was in the bottom with Darian, it's over. She's in the bottom with Monica, it's over. 
James would go home first, 1,000%, which breaks my heart because I love her, love her to death, but this isn't what happened. She made it far in the season, so, like, it's fine. But Monica would survive to episode two, which was the RDR Live Challenge, and this episode was a full convince. So, as you see, the winner of this challenge isn't even in my top three. How I picked my top three was a little bit difficult because I think a lot of queens did well in this challenge. I really liked this challenge. I thought it was really fun. I know some people don't like it, but for me, this was a total, total hit of a challenge. So many people did well. I mean, Candy was good. Jimbo obviously was good. Jessica was good. Alexis was good. Heidi was good. Darian was good. Kasha was good. The only people that I think did not do super well were Nasha and Kahana and La La Ri. But also we have to factor in that Monica Beverly Hills is here, and I think she is going to very much struggle in this challenge. She did not do well with comedy on season five, and with how nervous she was, I don't think she would be able to keep up with how well everyone else was doing in this challenge. So I think that Monica would definitely be in the bottom. Also with her runway, which was just not super elevated. So I think Monica's going to take up that bottom spot. And I also put Nasha Lopez there. I think between her and Kahana, Kahana had the better runway. Kahana had a better performance in the challenge. And Kahana just won a challenge in that episode prior. So all of those things are working against Nasha Lopez. Now, for the tops, I put Darian Lake in the top. And I think this is probably going to be contested in the comments. But for me, she was the standout in her skit. It was her and Alexis. And I think she was much funnier. She just had, like, that natural wit to her. And on the runway, she had an amazing look. It was camp. It was cute. It was fun. It fitted her great. And it was such an elevation from what we've seen Darian wear in season six and even some of her looks from episode one so i think this would have been a great opportunity to kind of show her growth and talk about it in the critiques like you look amazing you hit the nail on the head with the comedy and your episode one is not kind of your downward trajectory it was just a little slip up so for me i think darian fully deserved that top placement but like i said so many queens did well in this episode that i feel like a lot of people would have a lot of different opinions I do think most people would have Heidi and Kasha as like the top two. Heidi was so funny. She had so many good lines, just like great material to work with. And she has the perfect comedic timing. She has the perfect facial expressions, everything you need to make a fun bit work. And on the runway, I don't like her look. I don't understand her look, um, but she's taking a risk and I can appreciate that. And then for Kasha, I did give Kasha the win, and I know that there's going to be people in the comments saying what her runway wasn't good, and to that I'll say neither was Heidi's, so what do you want me to do? Kasha, to me, was very clearly the winner, very clearly the best in this episode. She was in two skits, which was more than anybody else was, and both of her characters that she played were total standouts and totally outshined the other people that were in those skits with her. Her facial acting, her physical comedy, her ability to play a character and, and know exactly what she's doing, she knocked this out of the park. And like I said in my Do Runways Matter on Drag Race video, there's been plenty of queens who've won wearing subpar outfits, so I don't see why this is going to be any different. I think Kasha deserved to win this episode. And it's so sad to me that she was not even in the top and ugh, it, it just sucks. So Kasha wins the challenge. She's going to lip sync against Pangina to Shebop. And I think she would lose the lip sync to Pangina. Kasha is a great lip syncer, but I just don't know if this is her song. But at the same time, if she does camp it up a little bit, I think she could keep up with Pangina. But I, I do think Pangina would probably edge her out just a little tiny bit. So then it goes to the voting. And how would these queens vote between Nasha and Monica? I think that Monica is kind of done here. I think that Nasha is someone who I think everyone knew was kind of in a struggle bus because she had less time. And she's someone who has good relationships with a lot of queens. Obviously, many of these queens have been to Roscoe's and worked with her in Chicago. So I think that she just had a couple more relationships on this cast than Monica did. And with Monica already being in the bottom episode one, I think it's just kind of curtains for her here. So Monica goes home in episode two, which is one episode longer than she lasted on the actual season. 
and Nasha makes it to the supermarket ball. I broke this down much like in episode one, giving the first two looks less weight than the final look, which I always think is the most important because that's the design challenge. You're making this in the workroom and it's like the last one that they do. So like, it's, it's just the most important. This was another episode that I think the placements were insane. I think that Heidi should have won and I gave her the win. Just looking at her garment that she made compared to Jessica's, Jessica's is clean. I see the concept. It's just something we've definitely seen before. It's things glued to a corset with a piece of fabric tied around her waist. Or maybe it was sewn. Maybe it was hemmed. I don't know. But looking at Heidi's, are there a couple technical issues? Yes, I don't love where the bust hits. I don't love that it doesn't hit the ground. But looking at the amount of work that went in, those are kind of minimal critiques compared to Jessica, who maybe doesn't have like glaring issues, but I just don't see the creativity. I don't see the vision as much as I do with Heidi's. And it's hard to compare because their first two looks were both total standouts. All four of those looks are amazing. But to me, Heidi just kind of knocked it out of the park with that third look and showed us a different silhouette, something different, not the typical design challenge looks that we see every single year like Jessica gave us. And then the third person in the top is Kahana. Her first two looks are super cute. That banana look is one of the best looks of the season. And to me, I thought she did something really smart in her third look with the color scheme and the color blocking and doing this like cerulean blue and yellow combination. It's just a really satisfying like color combo to the eyes. And she told such a story from head to toe that I thought it was really, really clean and it was really, really consistent over somebody like Jimbo who glued things to a corset, which looked fine in the end, but something like Kahana just stands out a little bit more to me as something different for her and for just a design look in general. So to me, Kahana deserved to be in that top. Now for the bottom three, this was also very difficult to figure out. Personally, for me, La La Ri was definitely a bottom. I think her first look is really cute. It's fun, but I think if you take away the prop, it is a little bit more on the basic side. It is just a bodysuit with a harness over it. What really elevates it is the character that she plays while she's showing it off on the runway. So it, it's good. It's just not amazing. Her second look, the caramel apple, I don't think works. I think the caramel for sure should have been latex. Or even that, like, what Jan wore in her snow look, that, like, I don't know if it's plastic or, or what it was, but it just would make it look more like caramel. <laughs> um, so, and, like, the stick could have been bigger. I just think I love the concept of this outfit. I do not love the execution. And for her last look, it really is just, like, it's a base garment. It's a very base garment that she didn't add anything to. She didn't accessorize. I, I don't see the vision. I see that she sewed a couple of things together, cut out some armholes, you know, made the skirt, and, and that was it. And compared to everybody else, I just don't think it was enough. I mean, even Kasha, like, I would prefer Kasha's over, over Lala's because is Kasha's insane? Yes, it's literally nuts. But... I can see the work that went into it. So even though I don't like it either, I'm going to put that above Lala's look that I don't like and also I don't think much work was put into. So you know what I mean? So a Lala read to me was a bottom two with Kasha. Kasha's last look, it's giving Rock'em Sakura. It's giving Jiggly Caliente. It's giving too much. And I get what she was going for, but I think somewhere she lost the vision. <laughs> and I, I can enjoy it. Like, it's fun. But if we're critiquing it as an actual fashion look, then um, it's not for me. <laughs> as well as her first look, which to me was, I have this white dress and I'm going to make it fit the category. And, you know, her facial expression giving sour cream. That's cute. It's really cute. But um, I, I don't understand these, like, circles on the shoulders. I don't know what it's supposed to be. And I, I haven't heard anybody like answer that for me. So I'm going to assume that there's no answer that it's just it's a mystery. I'll add it to the drag race mysteries iceberg like tier two. But yeah, those two were the worst for me. And I think Darian, it, this was hard. It was definitely hard because I think her first look, I like it, I think more than most people do. I get the Kylie Minogue reference. I like that there's the drips on the bottom. Is it a little off? Yes, but I, I still like it. I still think it's a cute idea, and I think the execution was mostly there. Now, the second look, 
so fun so cute when she like rips it off and shows us it's like chris evans 2003 whatever that fucking movie was where every gay boy when he had internet for the first time had his first <laughs> moment to that scene it's so it's amazing it's super super fun and then her third look i mean it's kind of giving the vanity milan rope dress or like the rope look from uk3 the same issues with that is the same issues I have here, which is where these ribbons just end at very weird places, and it looks kind of haphazard, but I do like elements of this. I do like the holographic foil that she has around her arms and draping out of the back. I think that the garment itself, like, it's made well. So while I do have issues with this look, I don't have as many issues as I did with Kasha and Lala's, and I think that her first two looks were more successful than Kasha and Lala's. So... I think Darian is a deserved low here. And this is going to be a very interesting elimination because you have La La Ri, who in this case has been safe the whole time before this episode, and Mrs. Kasha Davis, who had just won the week prior. But throughout this whole episode, Kasha was acting very defeated. Not even defeated. I don't think she was defeated. I think she was being a realist. I think that... She is going into things expecting the worst. I mean, I think that's what that's how I took it anyway. The other queens kind of perceived it as her being defeated. And, you know, from the speech she gave on the main stage to how she voted the week prior to saying in the deliberations, like, I, if I go home, I'm okay. I think if Darian is next to her and she has a win, I think Darian goes over Kasha. But because it's La La Ri, I think Kasha's going home here, even with her win. Because La La Ri is someone who was very connected on this cast. She was very close with Candy. So that means by proxy, she's close to Heidi. She's close to Jimbo. She's close to Alexis. She's close to all of these people that Candy is kind of working with. And I think all of those queens, whether they said it on the show or not, they were all going to stick together. And Kasha is on the outside of that. So I think that Kasha would go home. She she just doesn't have the relationships or the strategy on this season to get allies and get people to want to keep her. Whereas La La Ri was cutting deals and making alliances and, and just being fun in the workroom. And you could tell everybody really, really liked her. So I think that Kasha still is going to go home and it would be kind of a gaggy elimination. It'd be kind of like a Yada Sophia on All Star 6 where you win one challenge and then you go home early because the people in the workroom just don't jive with you as well as they do with the other person in the bottom with you. So... Kind of a gag, but I think Kasha still unfortunately goes home, which is sad for me because I'm a huge Kasha stan, but this isn't real anyway. <laughs> so, hello, this is post-recording Derek to talk about Heidi, because I forgot to talk about Heidi with Coconuts as the lip sync song against Raja O'Hara. I think Heidi would win. It seemed like Raja was kind of ill-prepared for that song in particular, and that kind of, I think, makes it even more obvious that Lala Ri is staying her and Heidi had a very close alliance, and I don't think Heidi was looking to break any of those. She was very strategic. She really cared about um, having a good strategy to help her get to the end. So I don't think she would send Lala Ri home. I think she would definitely send Kasha Davis home. Okay, let's move on. The next episode is the commercials. They are making TV pilots. Are, are they TV pilots or are they like movie trailers? I, I don't remember. I kind of remember them saying TV pilots, but then I kind of figured all of these were more like movies. Like, I don't know how you make a show out of this, like multiple episodes, like multiple seasons. So I don't know, whichever one. They get split up into groups, and obviously the groups are going to be a little bit different here because Nasha is here. And, you know, looking at what Nasha brought to the supermarket ball, I kind of was a little bit lost. Like, do I put her in the bottom? How would she do with a design look? I do think Nasha would do better than her look from the last design challenge. She's had a lot of time to like learn to sew and, you know, prepare. And her first two looks were actually her. Okay, so her first look, her the cook milk and cookies was probably my favorite of the whole category. And her second look, the watermelon one, is fine. It, it's giving more papaya than watermelon, but it's fine. I think that she would probably do well enough to, to be safe in, in that ball. So. She's here at the commercials, and she's going to take James's place on the team. So it's team Alexis, Nasha, and Darian. I get why this episode was judged in teams. I think there was very clearly a best and very clearly a worst commercial, but I would not judge this episode in teams because 
there were standouts on multiple teams and there were weak performances on multiple teams. So for me, it wasn't as cut and dry as like the commercials on All Star Six, where like Team Fix It Bitch, they all ate. And then whatever Jan's team was, like they were all kind of, mm. this one was like the team that won had one good queen and the other two were just fine. And then the queens in the bottom, like one of them was really good and the others were. So it's just for me, I think makes more sense if you judge it individually. So Jimbo is still going to win. She was clearly the best of this entire episode. But for me, I thought that Heidi and Lala did so good in their pilot They were so funny. They went stupid. And I think it totally worked. And looking at Jessica and Candy, they were just there. You know, that their whole scene was Jimbo. Like that entire skit was just about Jimbo. And Candy and Jessica were just like side pieces in it. Whereas Lala and Heidi were the definite standouts of their group. And I think the standouts of the episode along with Jimbo. So I would just put all three of them in the top together. And then for the bottoms, I think Naisha would be there. I think that she's not the best at comedy as we saw from episode two. So I think that she would kind of run into those same issues here. And I think Kahana really just didn't have a character. I think her character wasn't meant to be super funny, but she ended up just not having a character at all. She was just kind of like saying lines and whatever. So I think that those would have been the two worst with Alexis Michelle in the low position. And I think that she's still going to, you know, push Darian under the bus and all of that (laughs) on the main stage. But Alexis kind of did the same thing that she did in her season's TV pilot episode where she let the other people in her group outshine her. I guess in this case, maybe she doesn't. Maybe Naisha, you know, is worse than her and whatever. But I just don't think Alexis brought enough to her role or to her scene that she was a standout in any way. And, you know, Darian went home this episode, but she was the best of her group. And even if her idea wasn't like the best ever, I do think that she did a lot of the work on the actual pilot itself. So for me, that with her runway, which was a risk for her, it was something totally different, totally, totally surprising for Darian. I think keeps her out of the bottom over someone like Alexis or someone like Kahana. So for me, that's what I would do this episode. And maybe if you would judge it as teams, like that makes sense as well. But for me, this feels the most fair. Who goes home between Kahana and Nasha? It's going to be Nasha. This is her second time in the bottom. And Kahana has had a pretty good track record. She did have a low placement, but she's also been in the top two times with a challenge win. And she was just generally very liked. I mean, you could tell by just how far she went with being in the bottom that she was very well liked. And it was because she was integrated into that group that was very much aligned together. So I think that they would obviously save her here. And Nasha Lopez would go home in the fourth episode, two episodes longer than she did in the actual season. We move on to the Snatch Game. And like I said in the Riggery video, I'm not going to speculate on, well, what if this changed? Would Heidi stay if this? Or what what, what if Heidi stayed with Heidi quit? And I think that if it wasn't the candy thing that made her quit, it was going to be something else that made her quit. She was not in the headspace to be competing. She was not in a mentally good spot. And I don't think it's up to us to speculate what factors would change in order for her to stay. Like, it just feels kind of gross to me. So Heidi's going home in this episode. She's quitting after the Snatch Game, before the critiques, all of that. But in the Snatch Game itself, I think that the critiques were all very fair. Um, I think that Jimbo won, definitely. Alexis was definitely one of the best. But here we don't have James. And I think that other high spot would go to Darian. Specifically because I think everyone else did fine to like bad. And Darian is someone who I can bet would do a good job in Snatch Game. I don't think she would do better than Jimbo. But as we saw with her Paula Dean, she can definitely hold her own and tell some jokes. And she's one of the funniest people on this cast. So I'm confident that she would definitely be in the top. But not necessarily snag the win. So for the bottoms, we have Jessica and Kahana. I decided not to give a low this episode because Candy and Lala both were, they were fine. They were unoffensive. They were a little bit overlooked because most of that airtime went to Jimbo and Alexis. They were just kind of tucked between these two powerhouses. So I don't necessarily think we saw enough for me to say like which one would have been better, which one would have been in the bottom, all of that. So to me, they were both just very clearly safe. Now, Jimbo doesn't win another lip sync and no one goes home but if they had to vote in this episode between Jessica and Kahana I think Kahana is still getting the votes to leave this is her second time in the bottom and this is Jessica's first and Jessica was just generally pretty liked she wasn't really aligned as well as like some of these other queens were 
But just her talent, her likability, and her consistency in the competition, I think, is what really took her far into the competition. So we move on to the Joan Rusical, which James originally went home in this episode, but James has been long gone in this scenario. So we're going to have a very different outcome. So for me, I was really torn on who to give the win to between Candy and Lala. I do think I prefer Lala a little bit more, but if I'm unrigging, I don't think it was rigged that Candy won. I think Candy did a fantastic job, had a really good runway. So even though personally I would probably give it to Lala, I don't think it was rigged that Candy got the win, if that makes sense. So I kept the win with Candy. Lala was in the top. And I didn't give any low placements because no one really deserved it this episode. This was an, a fantastic showing. Uh, Lala did amazing. Alexis did amazing. Jessica did amazing. They're all in the top with Candy. And then the bottom two is Jimbo and Darian. Obviously, Darian struggles with choreo. And there was a lot of choreo in this rusical. Even if she takes James's role, which I think she probably does... James didn't even have like eight counts, but there's a lot of moving here and doing this and running over here. And I think that she would have trouble keeping up because she's just not good at choreo. And I think she gets in her head a little bit. And with how good everyone did in this episode, I think that Darian would be a standout in the wrong way. And I think she would do worse than even like Kahana. So I think that she would be in the bottom two here with Jimbo. And so what happens? Do the queens take a jab at Jimbo? Do they try and get her out? I mean, she only has two wins at this point, but she's still way ahead of everybody else. So what happens? Candy wins the lip sync against Anchiria, I think it was, to the Grace Jones song. And she's not getting rid of, of Jimbo. I mean, with everything that's come out since the season aired, I think that Candy never really was going to send Jimbo home. I think that she was trying to stir up some drama and trying to make some, you know, good television. But at the end of the day, these two are very, very good friends outside of the show. They were very good friends long before the season started airing. And I think they were really going to have each other's back the entire time. So I don't think she's getting rid of Jimbo regardless. And Darian is going to go home here. But also, this is Darian's first bottom. Which, I mean, I'm sure people are going to disagree with, but for me, like I said in the Riggery video, I think all of her bottom placements are very easily disputed, and somebody else could very easily take that position from her. So, while I think she got a really bad hand, I also think that people kind of see that, that they just kind of very much overlook Darian. And at least in this situation, she had some high placements, she made it halfway, and I think she's just featured a lot more. So I, I would really have appreciated this over what we got, but this is just how I'm going to remember it. Like, I'll, I'll rewrite history in my head if I have to. So the next episode is the Forensic Queen Improv Challenge, What Happened to Lil' Pound Cake. Unfortunate that Darian doesn't make it here because I think she would slay this, but she didn't. So Lala Ree's win, it's undisputed. I think that she was very clearly the best consistently giving physical comedy, giving just funny jokes, funny uh, characterizations with her character. But Jessica was right there. Jimbo did a good job. I think those were very clearly the top three. For the bottoms, I think that Kahana actually did land some jokes. Not everything landed. There was a lot of dialogue from her that, that just didn't have jokes. But with the character that she was given, I think that she played it well. I think we knew exactly who she was playing. And I think like the Akira is the body joke and things like that. I think that she did an okay job. I think that a low placement is warranted. I think that her runway was stunning, but doesn't necessarily fit the category. Sleepy Queen, I can't remember what it was called, but she was like, tired ass showgirl, tired ass showgirl. And she's this stunning showgirl, but like, she should have come out of like, a bed or something like that like done like a Courtney act look from season six with like the pillows and like the bad hair like all that would have been more funny and like more campy which is what I think they wanted from this category like I think Alexis Michelle with the Miss Man Pig which is probably my mm, that's probably my second favorite look of this entire season for me Kahana I think did do better than Candy Candy was funny but it was kind of like her Patrick star on her original Snatch Game where she's just playing Candy. And Candy can get by with just her natural charisma. I think she's naturally funny. But in this challenge where everyone I think is doing a pretty good job, it's those little things that are going to set you apart. And Candy not giving any characterization besides herself and really not being that funny either. 
I think is what's going to land her in the bottom. I also think that her runway, I think I like it more than most people do, but I do see why other people don't like it. So that's not doing her any favors either. So Candy's going to be in the bottom here with Alexis Michelle, who I think was the worst in this challenge. She really just did not give any personalization besides I'm a slut from New York, which is like, that's what she's giving out of drag anyway. So kind of like Candy, it's just not enough. It's not giving us a different side of you, which is like what these improv challenges are really meant to do. Like think about Akira in the LADP where she's been this like very polished, put together pageant queen. And that was the moment where she just got to do something completely different. And that's what wins you the challenges in, in these uh, improv. Like if you're showing something different, you're giving us a different character, a different perspective on your drag. And I don't think Candy or Alexis did that at all. So what's going to happen here with Lala Ree winning the lip sync against Georges, and she gets to send one home. I think Alexis does still try and cut her that same deal, but I think in this case, it's against someone who she's just better aligned with. And I don't think she would send Candy home. They have a lot of history. I think they were very closely aligned coming into the season. And they were planning on working together coming into the season. Whereas I just don't think she had that with Alexis Michelle. And she could also justify it because Alexis had not had a win yet. Whereas Candy did. So I think that she would send Alexis home here one episode before Alexis won her first challenge. So unfortunate for Alexis. But that is what I think would happen. So the next episode is the second design challenge of the season where they're each given a box containing a bunch of materials that are reminiscent of previous All-Stars winners. Kahana is here. How would she do? I think she would do fine. We saw with her first design look, she definitely can throw together a look. She definitely can sew. She definitely can work with fabrics. And I mean, like, I don't know what she necessarily used for that first look, but it didn't look like fabric fabric. It looked like some kind of plastic material. So with this challenge where they are given fabrics, I think she could do even better than that first look. So looking at the looks from this episode, Jimbo was the best besides Alexis, so I think she would get the win here. And then Jessica did a fine job. I think other people like this look more than I do. But compared to everyone else, I think Jessica did good, deserved to be in the top rather than the bottom. And I think Kahana would be in the top. I think Kahana could even do better than Jessica, to be honest with you. So this would be a nice kind of comeback moment after being in the bottom for a little while. So the bottom two stays the same. It's Candy and Lala. Lala just had some issues with like the fit and like some of the choices that she made with accessories and Candy's is actually accessorized really well. It's just that the look itself is kind of like Lala's first look in like the, the supermarket ball. It's just not enough. It's, it's the base garment before you add the accoutrements to take it to that next level. And when everyone else is doing pretty good, there's no flop looks. There's no, you know, soju. There's no jiggly caliente. There's no Lollary bag <laughs> look. So when they don't, when there's none of those around you, sometimes just wearing a, a meh look can end up with you being in the bottom. And I think that's what happened here for Candy. So Lala and Candy in the bottom two. Jimbo is going to lip sync against Nikki Doll. Two of these boots are made for walk-in. And this is hard. I think Nikki Doll did a good job in this lip sync. I think she did do a good job. But I think Jimbo could win this lip sync. I think that Nikki Doll was doing a great job to a different song, whereas I think Jimbo could really camp up this performance. And like we saw with her last lip sync, the Freakazoid lip sync, when she can play a character, we, she can just be stupid. That is when she's going to succeed in a lip sync. And I think that she could 1000% do that to this song. That's kind of what Alexis did. And I think she could do something like that. She might not be able to, to strut as much as Alexis did, but I think she would... I think she would win. I do think she would win against Nikki. And because she won, I think that she's saving Candy here. Because Candy just saved her a couple of episodes ago. They obviously are still very much aligned. And over someone like Lala, who could be justifiably eliminated, I think that she would 1000% keep Candy and they would move on to the final four. Now, the final four is basically the same, except instead of Alexis, we have Kahana. And it is the roast. And, I mean... I think this is very obvious what would happen. 
Jimbo is going to win, playing Joan Rivers, giving an iconic performance. Jessica is going to do amazing, but because it's a bottom three, she's going to be there. Candy does a solid job, a pretty good job, but also it's everyone's in the bottom, so she will be there. And I think Kahana would struggle, and I think Kahana would go home here. But I think looking at her track record here compared to her actual one, you can really see that she had good moments. She wasn't constantly flopping. Like, if you look at her track record from the actual season, it's it looks like a nosedive. But I don't think that was warranted, and I think that she did a much better job than she got credit for from the judges. So I think it's nice to see her all the way at the end and not just bottoming her way out, but, you know, having some good moments at the end there. We move on to the makeover where, again, I don't think this changes. I think Candy Muse wins and sends home Jessica so that she can be in that top two with Jimbo. And nothing else changes for the for the talent show. I think that Lala Ree and James Mansfield were the correct picks, but I do think Lala Ree won the lip sync over James, so I, I would have just given the win to Lala there. And then for that finale, I think Candy did better in like the final lip sync. I think Candy did better in the performance, but I hate basing you know a final episode off just that. I look at the entire season, as I think most people do, and I think what Drag Race usually does. So I think that Jimbo killed this season. Looking at her track record here, it's not nearly as inflated as her one on the actual season was, but she still has four wins and a high placement and two bottoms, but one of them was just kind of by default. I think Jimbo did a really, really, really good job on this season. One of the most consistent track records and performances we've ever seen on All Stars. So it makes total sense for her to win here. And then, that's the end, I tried to do some other stuff. I tried to do, like, okay, what if there was a comeback episode? What if there was, like, you know, like, All-Star 6 when they're lip-syncing against each other? I think this is kind of what I got. Lala just comes right back in, and then in the roast, I don't think she does better than Jimbo, so I think she's in the bottom and goes home. So, like, after that, it just doesn't change. I also thought about maybe putting the talent show first, but that just kind of threw everything out of whack. This season... It was very um, polarizing. Actually, no, it wasn't polarizing. I think we were all on the same page. We were all on the damn same page. But looking at this, I think we get some different storylines out of it, out of these track records. I think Darian has a much better run. She gets appreciated for her fashion more. She gets appreciated for still being able to bring the comedy. I think Kasha gets her nice moment in episode two, and then her elimination feels even more crazy in episode three and could be even more of a moment of contention, you know, in, in the edit and from the fandom. Kahana, I think, can actually get that redemption arc fully, the full-on redemption arc that she deserved, but they really did not give her on the actual season. And I think you have a more satisfying conclusion to the Alexis and Lala storyline, where, you know, at some point Lala just says, I don't, I don't have your back as much as you have mine, and I'm sorry, but you gotta go. That would be a really interesting storyline. I think Alexis has probably my favorite storyline of this season, where, you know, she's trying so hard to keep up with the strategy, but she just tries aligning with the people who already have alliances they care more about than, than with her, and at the end, she ends up with no allies. So I think that was a really satisfying arc already, but I think this, they could have played with it even more. You know, so I, I think that you could really work with the storyline here. And Jimbo, I don't think, becomes the obvious winner until the very end. Whereas, like, her getting three wins by episode five was, like, it was so boring to watch. And in this, she doesn't get her third win until episode eight. So it really does feel like maybe it's more of a toss-up of, like, who's going to win? Because Jessica's doing really well, and, and Lala Ree's been doing well, and Alexis is doing well. Like, other people could catch up to her. Uh, whereas, like, on the actual season, like, we knew no one was catching up. We knew it was Jimbo's till the end. So I think this would have been a much more interesting season to watch. Personally, do I understand why they did what they did? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. It, it's still very annoying when they felt like they had to push Jimbo so hard, but they didn't need to push her at all. Like, they really did not need to push her because she was going to win regardless. And she would have done it by her own merit and not get these kind of weird challenge wins and like weird high placements that people found so suspicious. And like looking at this, she she still won. She still had the best track record by far. So 
I would have preferred to see those season personally, but I'm sure that some of you probably have different thoughts. So let me know in the comments below which one of my placements was a wackadoodle choice. I'm sure that we are, are not all going to agree. I feel like whenever I ask other people for track records, I could ask like seven people and I would get seven completely different track records. So hopefully I did my job as best as I could. If you are not already, I would love for you to subscribe. We are reaching that 70k, and when I hit 75, I will be doing a full drag look head to toe, not half-assing it. It's going to be wild when we get there, so help me get there. And also, Drag Duel. And also, here are all my social medias, so like, go follow me if you feel like it. If you want to hang out with me, if you want... You guys are so fucking annoying. You all told me to join Threads. I got so many messages, why are you on Threads? Everyone's on Threads. And I said, listen, we have played this game over and over again, where everyone says they're quitting Twitter and joining something else, and then they're all on it for a week, and I'm like, okay, why did I download this? And I said, I'm not joining Threads until I'm for sure that this is going to last. And everyone, no, Derek, this is going to last. No, it's really going to last. You have to do it. No, isn't anyone actually using that thing anymore? No. So, pff, whatever. So I am just going to delete that from my phone. But yeah, catch me on X until we find something, preferably by, you know, made by someone who's not a billion bazillionaire, uh, like the Zucks. <laughs> um, you'll catch me on X until that day comes. So thank you guys all so much for watching. And I will catch you all in the next one.